What a difference just a couple weeks can make in the NFL. Just about one month ago, the Pittsburgh Steelers were undefeated. They had everything going for them on offense, at least through the air. On defense, they were one of the best units in the league, having one of the best pass rushes led by T.J. Watt and Bud Dupree. Now, as we stand here in the middle of December, the Steelers' season is looking very, very bleak. The quarterback looks uh, like a shell of his former self. The offensive line looks absolutely horrible, both run blocking and, quite honestly, they haven't been that great pass blocking either, and we will get into all of that. There was no running game at all. On defense, the defensive coordinator refuses to play a man coverage. On offense, the offensive coordinator refuses to change things up when they aren't working. And Devin Bush, Robert Spillane, and Bud Dupree all have had serious injuries, and the Steelers are without all three currently, and will be without Devin Bush and Bud Dupree for the rest of the year. But where do the Steelers go from here? Can their season still be salvaged? I'm going to tell you whether we can or not. Be sure to like this video, share this video on social media, and subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell so you can get notifications whenever a new fantasy football or NFL draft video is out. Let's get into this. But we're going to start off, I guess, at the quarterback position because that's the easiest place to start off. And a lot of people are blaming Ben Roethlisberger for a lot of the problems. You know, he doesn't look the same. Uh, of course, Jason LaCamfora comes out with this report that his knee issues could be serious. You know, how you know how much do the Steelers really need to worry about that? You know, his shoulder doesn't seem to be fully healthy. Now that he's getting some wear and tear as the season's gone on, he seemed to have lacked some of his arm strength. What has happened in these past couple weeks? Well, first of all, I don't think that all of this is Ben Roethlisberger's fault, and I do believe he can come back and play better. However, he is not the same quarterback he was five years ago. He's 38 years old. He's coming off an injury that most people thought he would never return from, which is great in and of itself, but the past few weeks we're starting to notice something, at least I am as a Steelers fan, and it really boils down to the offensive line for the most part. Now, the offensive line has been horrible run blocking. They're not built to run block. They were built to protect Ben Roethlisberger. There is not a lot of athleticism. David DeCastro used to be one of the best run blocking guards in all of football. He had an injury at the beginning of the year. He hasn't looked the same since. He's regressed mightily compared to the past couple years. Marquise Pouncey had a bad year last year. Most people were hoping with Ben coming back, he would have a bounce back year. Uh, but he was on the COVID list for a couple weeks. He hasn't played that well either. Um, hopefully he'll come out and stuff. Booker McFarlane made some comments Monday that got him a little bit angry. Hopefully that will come out. Um, he'll play a little bit better. Matt Filer, the Steelers, moved inside to guard this year. He played right tackle at a fairly high level uh, in 2019. The Steelers tried moving him to the inside. That has not worked out. He's now out. Potential pectoral injury. But Kevin Dotson has been a bright spot. He's been the one guy who can actually help in the run game some. Uh, and he's been one of the more consistent pieces, so he's gained a lot of playing time. Of course, he also had, went down with an injury in Sunday night's game against the Bills. At left tackle, Alejandro Villanueva's had a pretty good year as a pass blocker. He's never been a great run blocker. And then the right side, Chukumo Korafor, also a good pass blocker. Probably the worst run blocker I've seen is, uh, on the Steelers in a long time. Uh, I mean, he is absolutely horrible. He doesn't get any push in the run game whatsoever. But the one thing people are noticing, because a lot of people say, oh, the Steelers' offensive line, you know, they're a really good pass blocking unit. Not necessarily. Ben Roethlisberger's getting the ball out so quick, it's just covering up a lot of the problems that there really are on that offensive line. And a lot of people say, well, you know, you know that's just the style of offense Ben wants to play. I don't know if it is totally. And I know he likes to spread things out. He doesn't like to be under center. And I understand some of that. And I think some of that he needs to be willing to give up if the Steelers' offense is going to improve as the rest of the season goes on. But I believe he still can throw deep. We saw him throw some bombs to Clay, Chase Claypool earlier this year. Steelers have gotten away from that. How? Why is that? Part of it, I believe, is the offensive coordinator, which we'll get into in a minute as well. But also, I don't think that Ben trusts the offensive line anymore to protect him to take that deep drop back in the pocket. We know that Ben, of course, with all the injuries he has, he's not mobile. He's put back on some of that weight. He's not in the greatest shape right now, which isn't the end of the world. But he, without that mobility, he's not going to be able to run away from anything. He doesn't want to be carrying three and four defenders on him like he did 10 years ago. He's not that same quarterback. He's, I still think he has some good arm strength, 
but we're seeing even when he does drop back and throw it deep, he's throwing it off of his back foot. He's not stepping into his throws, and I think a lot of that is because he lacks confidence in the offensive line. Literally, when you watch the game, does it not look like Ben is a little bit scared behind that offensive line? He, I mean, literally trying to get that ball out quick because he doesn't believe that they can protect him. They've lost a lot of depth along the line. Uh, they've had injuries, and they're aging. Villanueva, Pouncey, and DeCastro are all over 30. The Steelers are going to have to draft some younger talent in the draft this year, the offensive line. It's a really good draft class for it, so I think the Steelers really do need to go after and acquire some talent, probably two or three in this draft. But what do you do about it this year? I mean, you, you don't, can't really change the personnel that quickly, but I think what's going to have to happen is that the Steelers have got to figure out to play some a little bit more physical up front, even though they're not built to do it, because you have to get some sort of a running game going to offset some of the uh, issues that we're currently having with the passing game. And, I mean, James Conner, he, he has some injuries as well. I mean, the Steelers are just rattled by injuries, haven't had a whole bye week the entire week, and that plays a lot into it. Um, but the Steelers aren't going to use that as an excuse, nor should they. Um, but I, what I do think is needs to happen towards the end of the year, probably week 16 is what I would do. I would rest the starters, uh, especially on the offensive side of the ball. Give them a week off. Don't even have them come in that week. Just, you know, go off, go on vacation in some place that's not locked down, um, and just enjoy a week off. Uh, because they haven't had that mental rest. You know, after the Titans outbreak, they had been practicing all week. With the Ravens, they had to keep changing it. It wore a lot on them mentally, and they're fatigued, and we're seeing that on the field. The defense is always gassed because the offense can't hold on to the ball. The offense is fatigued mentally, especially Ben Roethlisberger, um, just with the receivers dropping passes. He's having to carry a lot of the load, and he doesn't trust that offensive line. So, first of all, the offensive line has to improve. That's If it does not improve, Steelers are done. I think it can, but the scheming has been poor. Ever since Mike Munchak has left, Sean Sarah has not done a good job of scheming for opposing teams. And I think that's the biggest difference between him and Munchak. I think it's time for Sean Sarah to go. I also think it's time for Randy Fickner to go. Unfortunately, Ben is not going to want to learn a new offense at 38 years old. So it looks like he's going to be hanging around as long as Ben hangs around. But you got to fix something, Randy. We have not changed anything in our game plan the past few weeks. It's the same short, quick out routes that are not working, and they haven't really worked since, you know, Baltimore and Cincinnati in, you know, week eight, week nine. It hasn't worked since then at all, and he's refusing to change things. Matt Canada was bringing in some of the zone, the jet sweep type concepts with the, you know, putting Chase Claypool in motion. And that got old after a while, but I almost think the Steelers need to get back to that because of the offensive line struggles. It's easier for the offensive line to block when the defenders are going laterally than when they're coming straight vertically. So maybe that will help the running game a little bit. Even though it's nothing you know, terribly special and it wasn't terribly effective, I think the Steelers almost need to try that a little bit more again just to see if they can get some spark going offensively. And really... I, part of this could be Ben, so I can't necessarily blame it all on Randy Fickner because he's. I know it seems like he's trying to find things that Ben wants to do. Ben doesn't want to go under center anymore. But the Steelers have to get some play action going and throwing the ball downfield. You cannot have every pass two yards out, and you can't be throwing the ball 60 times a game doing that. You have to mix it up if you're going to throw it 60 times a game. So part of that, Ben has to give up a little. Um, but then again, you're coming back to the offensive line. Does he trust the offensive line so that he can drop back? But you have to get some play action going, forcing the ball downfield, because the box is always stacked. Even though we're throwing the ball 60 times a game, everyone knows that's the short passing game. So the box is already stacked, and that also is, makes it really difficult for you to run the ball. So the Steelers have to get it going. Chase Claybull's kind of hit a rookie wall. They need to get him going again. Juju Smith-Schuster, they need to get him the ball more often. And honestly, I would bench Deontay Johnson for a full game right now. He is totally lost mentally right now. He has a lot of talent, and he's grabbing the ball, but he's looking before he has full possession of it, and that's causing a lot of drops. Eric Ebron, same thing. Uh, just carelessness with Ebron, I believe it is. And that was what I was really worried about when he came in. He never really seemed to care when he was with Detroit. He had one good year with Indianapolis. 
I believe he's one of the most overpaid, overrated tight ends in the game. And he's had some nice plays in the red zone for Ben, but he can't catch the ball. It's time to get the guys on the field that are going to catch. I'm not a James Washington fan. I've never been a James Washington fan. But at least he's catching the ball, and he's playing well right now. So get him in the game. Get Chase Claypool. Play him. And then you have Juju in the slot. Get your guys that are most likely to catch the ball right now, because that's the number one problem with the Steelers right now, is the drops. You have to, you can't drop six, seven passes a game as an offense. You can, I mean, and again, offensive line has some to do with it as well because Ben's getting that ball out quick. Some of the passes aren't terribly accurate, but everyone has to take accountability on this offense. It is absolutely ridiculous. On the defensive side of the ball, I do want to get into one thing because um, there's no man, we're, we don't play any man coverage anymore. Last year at the end of the year when the Steelers were absolutely dominant on defense, when the Steelers had no offense, they were always on the field, it didn't matter because they play lockdown man defense. I want you to go back and watch the fourth quarter of the Bills game if you don't agree with the Steelers needing to play more man defense. Justin Lane, second year pro out of Michigan State, I believe he's going to be a really good corner for the Steelers. There was one play where he was in press man against Stephon Diggs and he blanketed him. When the Steelers are in zone, it's a totally different story. Um, I believe there's a fourth down and three um, against uh, Buffalo in that game. Buffalo went for it. Maybe it was third down. It's third down and three, I believe. The Steelers had the corners eight yards off the line of scrimmage. All you have to do is do a little quick out pass, and it's a free first down. I mean, it makes totally no sense. In, there's no situations where I'm seeing the Steelers consistently playing man defense. You have to get down and get a little bit more physical with these receivers because we're laying so many things underneath. Plus, the injuries are racking up. TJ Watt did not have a good game uh, this past week. Uh, Alex Highsmith has played really well. I believe he's going to be a really good player for the Steelers in the future. But Bud Dupree being out is a huge loss. Devin Bush has been a huge loss all year. Robert Splain, who was filling in nicely for him for the most part, uh, he went down with injury, and he's not going to be back probably until the playoffs. So Avery Williamson is now the next man up, and he's done all right, but he's not excellent in any one area. Uh, Ulysses Gilbert's just coming back from injury, and now the Steelers have a safety, a slow safety, Marcus Allen coming down and playing uh, linebacker as well. So the Steelers are just trying to m put some things together, but the biggest thing for the defense is play more man coverage, and then hopefully the offense can pick up the slack, because that's the only way this is going to get fixed. So that's what I'm going to leave it at today. What do you guys think? If you are a Steelers fan out there, what do the Steelers need to do to save their season? I believe we still can save it. We're one game away from clinching the division. I would rest starters week 16, not week 17. Here's why. Because when Ben Roethlisberger and Mike Tomlin, since they've both been here, the Steelers struggle coming out of bye weeks. We always start off rusty. So I don't want to have that rust going into the playoffs. Play them week 17 against the Browns, assuming we have clinched the division. Um... And but week 16 against Indianapolis, just expect a loss, bench all the offense, tell Ben, tell the offensive line. I mean, I know you can't bench everyone because, you know, you don't have enough people on the 53 man roster. But for Ben, especially some of the, you know, Marquise Pouncey, David DeCastro, some of the more veteran players don't even show up that week. No meetings, no nothing. Take your bye week. You never had a bye week. You need to get rested mentally and physically and we'll go from there. But. I'm interested to see if the Steelers can salvage their season. Mike Tomlin has some work to do, and I really believe it does begin with him. It doesn't end with him, but it does begin with him because it's his job to pop the hood, as Urban Meyer would say, and figure out what the problem is, and you have to find it and find it quickly. If that's the offensive coordinator's problem, if that's the problem, you go to him and make some change happen. If it is the players, if it's the offensive line, you have to preach physicality, which seems to be the route he's taking right now. If it's the defense that is just worn down right now, you're a defensive-minded coach, Mike Tomlin. Forget your pride and your cover two defense and be be willing to play some more man-to-man -man defense. If the problem is Keith Butler, go to Keith Butler. Tell him, okay, you need to change play calling. I'm not saying Mike Tomlin's a bad coach. I, I'm not saying we need to fire him, nothing like that. Mike Tomlin is a good coach, and I think he's fine. But it is his job to figure out what needs to be fixed. And he better do it quickly because the Steelers, this is the Steelers' best chance we're going to have for a while, probably at a Super Bowl. Right now, it doesn't look too good this year either. But it's not, the hope is not all lost. But the Steelers have to pick up their feet quickly if they want to save their season. <clears throat> they want to save their season, excuse me. 
Not the way I wanted to end the video, but anyways, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any fantasy football questions or comments, put them in the comment section. Fantasy football playoff time is here, so be sure to check out my Week 15 Starts and Sits video, which you can by clicking on the video right up here. Or you can check out a uh, link in the description for BehindTheSteelCurtain.com. I have my latest NFL Draft big board out as well. You'll want to go and check that out. That's going to do it all for today. Go Steelers. We'll see you next time.